I've stated many times over the years, with all the lies that give us the truth in plain sight, with this one episode of Sesame Street, where there's a lot of programming when it comes to the ball earth and NASA, as you see here, you have Buzz Aldrin, of course, from the Apollo 11 mission, uh, Sesame Street, talking about supposedly landing on the moon. But again, getting back here to the opposite end, the opposite spectrum, you have this teacher pointing at a globe which is right next to a space rocket and it says fiction <laughs> right below both of them and definitely this is truth in plain sight no doubt about it and let's play the actual clip that's right grover this is the fiction section fiction means it's a made-up story oh hey elmo i bet we can find your galactic gale comic book here this is the fiction section fiction means it's a made-up story and again there's the clip that was just played and she's pointing right at the globe and it reminds me of this globe that I saw at a retail store and I knew about this before even looking at the bottom where when you look at the bottom itself it states globes are not meant for educational purpose but only decorative purpose and they again they always leave the truth in plain sight uh, for all to see and as far as, again, when it comes to the rocket ship, you know, people say, but I've seen rockets take off. So I know they're real. The issue is not if rockets take off. It's if they actually go into outer space, of course, and they do not. And here's a prime example of that with this so-called rocket launch into deep space by SpaceX off the coast of Florida on Cocoa Beach. I sped up the footage a bit just for the sake of saving some time. And you can definitely see that this so-called space rocket does not go into outer space. It basically flies parallel to this level Earth that we live on, and it comes straight back down. And this is the problem with society that believes in this nonsense of space travel. They have a brain. They cannot use it. They have eyes. The eyes do not work. Don't make every excuse to fit the narrative that they're told that SpaceX, head by Elon Musk, actually goes in outer space. And you can clearly see objectively that this so-called space rocket is coming straight down. This is not a low Earth orbit like we're told. And again, people's eyes, <laughs> they are useless. Their brain does not work. And you cannot see the obvious with these so-called space rockets that do not go into space. Basically, just an expensive bottle rocket. And the reason for the SpaceX and the past NASA space shuttle launches off the Florida coastline is basically these rockets in the space shuttles end up in the Bermuda Triangle. This is the reason why they have the bad stigma with the Bermuda Triangle. So people don't look any further, as I showed in a previous video with this one album cover for the band Bermuda Triangle, it's called The Missing Tapes. And this is mockery in plain sight. And also, too, from DC Comics, where they show the Bermuda Triangle map. In one area spotlighted, it says, Secret Freemason Shadow Government Headquarters. And let's get a little bit of a close-up of that. And this is from DC Comics X-Men number 4. And just take a look here at the map itself. And again, Bermuda Triangle. And let's get a little bit better of a close-up. And there you see Secret Freemason Shadow Government Headquarters within the Bermuda Triangle. And again, getting back to the, the still shot that I have here when it comes to Sesame Street talking about fiction with space rockets and the fake phony baller. They're always giving us the truth in plain sight. And you see all the goons here with Mickey and Minnie Mouse and for those that watched my previous video from a few years back, and I showed this clip here with the four supposedly aboard the ISS and the one female pointing at her hair, and obviously this is hairspray. And I'll play that clip. You look like you're in a studio, maybe in Omaha, Nebraska or something. The, the, the shot is so clear. Is this a hoax? Are you really in space still? Is this a hoax? Are you really in space still? See the hair? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have to do something for you. Yeah. 
Oh, I want to do it. I know. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Watch <laughs> this. <laughs> can everybody float around for us? That was really cool, Chris. Can everybody float around? Look at her. That is so cool. Look at her. That is so cool. I think, uh, I think Sandy's hair is pretty much a dead giveaway. And definitely mocking when he says Sandy's hair is a dead giveaway. But again, the connection when it comes to NASA and not only Sesame Street, but like I just showed with Walt Disney, as you see here. Here's Walt Disney with Werner Von Braun, of course, the head of rocketry when it comes to NASA going back from the inception. And just another connection, many know about this. When it comes to Walt Disney's Pluto character and the outline on the actual so-called planet Pluto, so this is mockery. Pluto the dog on Pluto the planet. And again, it's just a big game to the people that run this world, that are controlling things from behind the scenes, that are controlling all all of TV. They control NASA, they control Sesame Street, they control it all. TV is nothing but a box of lies and just more mockery just for the sake of it here, showing these Russians aboard the ISS. And take a look here. What do you see here? They're always giving us Easter eggs in plain sight. And one of them, is the orange on the table. What what happened to this anti-gravity? No gravity. And everybody's floating around, but the orange is on the table. And I found this interesting as well. More Easter eggs in plain sight with Yuri Gagarin, as you can see here. And of course, this is the Russian alphabet, but in English, the CC for 33. So again, you have your 33 coded in plain sight, the orange on the table, as a form of mockery. Now getting back to Buzz Aldrin as I shown earlier, I found this pretty hilarious with his appearance on Sesame Street. Let's take a look here and take a listen to the dialogue here. Absolutely hilarious the dialogue with Cookie Monster. Take a listen. You've got a friend that I'd like you to meet. He can tell you all about the moon. Yeah what like like you friend been there or something? I explore <laughs> Just absolutely hilarious. Let's continue on. I explored space, and once I rode in a great big rocket and landed right up there on the moon. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and let's continue on once again, and it gets to be pretty interesting here. I brought you a little piece of the moon. Oh, yeah. Now, I covered this aspect many years ago from NBC News on their official website, where basically NASA supposedly gave a moon rock to the Netherlands. And the hilarious part is the Dutch National Museum, they actually took a look at the supposed moon rock and they found out it was a fake. <laughs> that it was just petrified wood. And that is absolutely hilarious. So that's the foundation. You know, when obviously they never been to the moon and that's the foundation of that lie. So after that lie, the, the lies just continue with the supposed moon rock being nothing more than petrified wood. And the official moon rock and museum is just petrified wood. The Dutch National Museum said Thursday that one of its prized possessions, a rock supposedly brought back from the moon by U.S. astronauts, is just a piece of petrified wood. And the definite problem with telling a lie is you can't keep your lie straight. And take a listen to what Buzz Aldrin says here regarding stars. The stars all around are even brighter than they are here. Now let's take a look at this infamous clip, the press conference with the NASA astronauts after supposedly arriving back to Earth, and they were asked about stars, seeing stars from the moon surface. Possibly the most embarrassing moment of all comes when the famous astronomer and journalist Sir Patrick Moore asks the astronauts whether they could see stars from the moon. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? But not one of them, surprisingly, remembers having seen a single star by the naked eye. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Even Collins, who was left orbiting the moon while the other two descended on the surface, does not remember seeing a single star. I don't remember seeing any. And there you go. And this very infamous clip as well when it comes to this eight-year-old girl, Zoe, asking Buzz Aldrin 
Why haven't they gone back to the moon in a long time? And this is something, you put this on CNN, you put this on Fox News, and people would question the official narrative of the so-called moon landing. But of course, you'll never see this on mainstream media because definitely it would have a major impact on the minds of the masses after hearing this clip. Take a listen. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not uh, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there, and, and that's the way it happened. And again, imagine playing this clip on CNN or Fox News, BBC, and of course you'll never see that being played on national or international TV. It would have too much of an impact. So again, when you watch the news, it's just propaganda, and the real information is being filtered out. So people come to a conclusion based on only the information that they're fed, of course. And getting back to this one still from Sesame Street, and the fiction with the ball earth, and the so-called space rocket that gets us back to which i played this clip many years ago as well when it comes to william shatner who of course was the captain of the starship enterprise back with the original star trek series and with this official nasa video footage that was released basically basically mocking what nasa does calling it science fiction let's take a listen or nine minutes later, the signal. I mean, it's it's science fiction. Shadows that cross in front of a star that suggest there's a planet, and it's a big enough planet to be the size of the M1 of the Earth. Is it possible that life exists on that planet that's only a shadow in a telescope? Those are the imaginative things that NASA are looking at. That's every bit as passionately imaginative as science fiction so again there you go they're always giving us the truth in plain sight like i've demonstrated throughout this video presentation the truth is always out there for those that seek it and definitely they're putting it out there in plain sight for all to see